So, let me, let me try to be a lawyer. I'll be like, like so I'm like testifying right now, and I'm like, this, this, this. So, like, a dog was like, whoo, whoo. And I'm like, 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 I'm and his flies and spiders are almost obliterated. All right, Governor. This here's about the old story. That air wolf which we called Basica was one of them grey ones that came to Norway from Jamrax, which we bought off him four years ago. He was a nice, well-behaved wolf that never gave no trouble to talk of. I'm more surprised him for wanting to get out nor than any other animal in the place. But there, you can't trust wolves no more than a woman. Don't you mind him, sir? Broke in Mrs Tom with a cheery laugh. He's gone minding the animals so long that blessed if he ain't like an old wolf himself. But there ain't no harm in him. Well, sir, it was about two hours after feeding yesterday when I first heard the disturbance. I was making up a litter in the monkey house for a young puma which is ill. But when I heard the yelping and howling, I came away straight. There was Basteka tearing like a mad thing at the bars as if he wanted to get out. There wasn't much people about that day. And close at end was only one man. A tall, thin chap with a hook nose and a pointed beard with a few white ears running through it. He had an odd, cold look and red eyes. After breakfast, I did a little exploring in the castle. I went out on the stairs and found a room looking towards the south. The view was magnificent, and from where I stood, there was every opportunity of seeing it. The castle is on the very edge of a terrible precipice. A stone falling from the window would fall a thousand feet without touching anything. As far as the eye can reach is a sea of green treetops, with occasionally a deep rift where there is a chasm. Here and there are silver threads where the rivers wind in deep gorges through the forest. But I am not in heart to describe beauty, for when I had seen the view I explored further. Doors. Doors. <laughs> Doors everywhere. <laughs> and all locked and bolted. In no place save from the windows and the castle walls is there an available exit. <laughs> the castle is a veritable prison. And I am a prisoner. I tremble. And tremble even yet. So till all of us over, God be saint, my nerve did stand. Had I not seen the repose in the first place, and the gladness that stole over it just ere the final dissolution came, as realization that the soul had been won, could not have gone further with my butcher. Righteous God, release this poor creature's soul to thy care. God him. I was looking at a very beautiful girl in a big cartwheel hat, sitting in a Victoria outside Giuliano's, when I felt Jonathan clutch my arm so tight that he hurt me. And he said under his breath, My God. I am always anxious about Jonathan, for I fear that some nervous fit may upset him again. So I turned to him quickly and asked him what it was that disturbed him. He was very pale, and his eyes seemed bulging out as if half in terror, half in amazement. He gazed at a tall, thin man with a beaky nose and black moustache and pointed beard who was also observing the pretty girl. Correspondent writes us that to see some of the tiny tots pretending to be the bluefer lady is supremely funny. <laughs> some of our characterists might, he says, take a lesson in the irony of grotesque by comparing the reality and the picture. 
It is only in accordance with general principles of human nature that the Bluefell Lady should be the popular role at these alfresco performances. Our correspondent naively says that even Ellen Terry could not be so winningly attractive as some of these grubby-faced little children pretend <laughs> and even imagine themselves to be. There is, however, possibly a serious side to the question for some of the children. Indeed, all who have been missed at night have been slightly torn or wounded in the throat. I told you I'm not crazy. Leave me alone. Get your filthy hands off me. Do you want to sir? No. Because you know what? No. I don't deserve it. Please. What do you know? I can't take it anymore. Can I talk to you? How much do you want? Come over here. Please talk to you. I like you. Dr. Sue, please. Please. Hey, wait, my friend. Please. 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 Dr. Seward's Diary, 26 September. Truly, there is no such thing as finality. Not a week since I started Finnis, and yet here I am, starting fresh again. Or rather, going on the same record. Sacred to the memory of George Cannon, who died in the hope of a glorious resurrection on July 29, 1873 falling from the rocks at Kettleness. This tomb was erected by his sorry mother to her dearly beloved son. He was the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Uh, really, Mr. Swales, I don't see anything very funny in that. Ye don't see aught funny? <laughs> well, that's because you don't gone the sorrowing mother was a hellcat that hated him because he was a crook. A regular laminar he was, and he hated her so that he committed suicide in order that she mightn't get an insurance she put on his life. He blew nigh the top of his head off with an old musket that they had for scaring the crows with. Twarn't for crows then. No. No. P.S. My patient being Mina. asleep, I opened this to let you know something more. Sorry. He has told me all about you. Uh. And that you are shortly to be his wife. Climb. All blessings to you both. Got to climb. He has had some fearful shock, so says our doctor. And in his delirium, his ravings have been dreadful. Of wolves and poison and blood. Dead. Of ghosts Dead. and demons, and I fear to say of Dead what. Eyes. Careful with him always, that there may be nothing to excite no, him of this no. kind for a long time to come. Escape. The traces of such an illness as his do not lightly die away. Yeah. I have to we should have written long ago, but we knew nothing of his friends, no. and there was on him nothing that anyone could understand. He came in the train from Klausenburg, mm. and the guard was told by the station master ah. that he rushed into the station mm. shouting for a ticket for home. Yes. Seeing from his violent demeanor that he was English, they gave him a ticket for the furthest station on the way thither that the train reached. Be assured that he is well cared for. He has won all hearts by his sweetness and gentleness. He is truly getting on well, and I have no doubt will be in a few weeks all himself. Be careful of him for safety's sake. There are, I pray, God and St. Joseph and St. Mary, many, many happy years for you both. Keep, keep, keep walking. Oh, help, help me. Help me, help me, somebody, somebody help me. Oh. Oh. Oh.